lady and gentlemen welcome to the third public lecture organized by the civil engineering sectional committee of institution of engineers sri lanka uh, today's presentation will be on concrete it's going to be very interesting the presenter is mr charles samuel jones is a civil engineer from uh Bharatiyar University, Coimbatore. He started his career at, uh, as structural engineer at uh, Structural Engineering Research Center, Chennai, as a project assistant working with science scientists on various research projects. He joined Elkem Materials India and was responsible for the technical and marketing activities. His area of interest is high performance concrete, self compacting concrete, smart dynamic concrete. So, the name smart is very widely used these days. So, I would like to see what this smart dynamic concrete is. So, without taking much of your time, I would like to invite Mr. Charles Samuel Jones to make his presentation on modern concrete solutions, smart dynamic concrete. It's all yours. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, a warm welcome to uh, uh, all of you for this uh, lecture. And I thank the organizers for giving us an opportunity to uh, present <coughs> some of our experience and innovations what we have brought forth very recently and one of which is uh, the smart dynamic concrete. For the next sort of uh, hour or little more than a hour, I'll take you through two topics. On One is on smart dynamic concrete, the other would be a little bit on how to manage or how to work on high-rise construction, especially on concrete for high-rise construction. So I will give you a short introduction on what uh, the company where I come from. Uh, then I'll take you on to smart dynamic uh, concrete as well as high rise construction. We'll show you a few references and then we quickly conclude. BSF as such is a chemical company which is there for the last 150 years. Uh, quite a huge company with various uh, divisions. There are more than 15 divisions in BASF in the, on the, in the chemical, chemical fraternity. And I hail from the construction chemicals division. What it does is uh, there's an, more than a lakh employees throughout the world and uh, a lot of verbun, uh, verbun sites. What verbun means is the sites where none of the materials goes waste. So anything which is produced, uh, the, the finished good or the raw materials goes into the raw materials of the next process, then the next process and further. So all the materials get used within the system. So as I said, there are various divisions and broadly divided into sort of this sort of category. So we have chemical division, we have performance products, we have functional material solutions, agriculture solutions, oil and gas. And where I hail from is the constru construction chemicals division, which falls under the functional materials and solution. So just to know how, how big. So what we do is we take pride in always telling that anything and everything you use today, right from the time you wake up, that you wake up with your toothbrush, till you go to sleep back again, there would be something of BS of product which you would be using. The shirt what you use, there will be something on base of product in it. The, the paste, you take anything, the powder or the, the oil or the shampoo what you use, anything and everything will have a base of product in, in, use, in use. That's the wide variety or range of uh, uh, BASF uh, product uh, which, is, which is used in, uh, in the systems. Construction chemicals as such, uh, uh, for sales 2013 is 2.1 billion, more than 5,700 employees, 
broad range of construction solutions starting right from the admixtures, solutions for cement production, solutions for underground construction, concrete repairs, protect, repairs and protection, grouts, waterproofing, flooring, tile fixing, you name anything, if we have got the wide range of product systems. What it means to you is you are dealing with a single company which is, can give you 360 degrees of you know, solutions, the total solutions uh, from a single vendor. You don't have to go to two or three different players. Some of the, as I said, some of the portfolios like cement additives, underground, the same thing which I mentioned, also expansion controls, wood protection and so on. What we have done so far is like uh, because it spread uh, well throughout the world, the construction chemicals division of BASF itself is a hundred year old division. In the sense like we were earlier known as master builders technologies. Many of you have heard about it. We were known as MBT then, started in 1904. Uh, uh, we had in different countries, we have different brands, probably the same product but under different name. So if you see, if you heard about it, we had so many brands known for, uh, known, very famous and well known for. But what we have done, we have all brought that into one solution for the construction industry. We have brought everything under one brand solution called as Master Builder Solutions. So whatever goes into the construction industry comes under a single brand called Master Builder Solutions. So that's what BASF is for. BASF spends more than 3 to 5 percent of its total uh, turnover on R&D. What it means to you is that BASF is such a company which churns out innovations upon innovations and there's a lot of patent, patented products and patented solutions which we have which we introduce into the market. And one such uh, solution is what we are going to discuss today which is about the smart dynamic concrete. So very high amount of uh, a high amount of money is spent on R&D. Here we have, you can have a look at the, the main uh, R, research happens in Trostburg and then we have development centers in the US, in Shanghai as well as in other places and technical centers throughout all. In Mumbai we have a technical center and there are technical centers in other places as well. So as I said, there's a, we have a century of experience in bringing out new solutions. You know, for example, from the admixture side, uh, we started in 1932 with the Pozolith Plastizizers, which is quite famous for. We were the first to introduce armored cement floor system. You know, the, the cement flooring. We were the first to introduce, or we were the inventors of grout in the world. Then you have 1975, you have BNS based admixtures. So you have <coughs> alkali free accelerators. So we were the inventors of alkali free. So every year we come out with something or the new which we have uh, for you in the market where something different is being done. As I said, we have a wide range of solution which can fit into. So whether it be a residential construction or a commercial construction or even an infrastructure, we have a very broad range of solution which can get into each and every part of the structure. So this is for residential, right from admixtures to dispersions for mortars, plasters, insulation, flooring systems, or tile adhesives, all these things. Uh, we have a lot of solution for that. Same thing holds good for the commercial building as well. We have for basement and waterproofing solutions and other things we do have and for infrastructure projects as well. So there's a wide range of so BASF because of this uh, BASF is always a partner of choice for many of our customers. So you whether you take the Taipei 101 or the Shanghai Tower or the Burj Khalifa or the Petronas Tower all these buildings have been done with BASF admixtures. So uh, so there's a wherever you know we are everywhere I could say that we are everywhere take it the marina and Sentosa at Singapore the whole of this thing has been done with the super retention technology admixture in, in this particular project the Petronas tower the Taipei 101 all high-rise buildings have been done with 
BASF had made sure. Burj Khalifa as well as longest links 36 kilometers 32 kilometers long links in China and other places have been done with BASF mixtures. So we do the tallest, the longest, you, you name it anything, we are there. Safety for nuclear power projects in China as well as in India, there's a number of nuclear power projects where BASF materials are being used. You talk about the strongest, you know, we talk about ultra high strength concrete. We're talking about strengths as high as 150 or 180 MPA. So this is an example of a brilliant tower in Tokyo in Japan which was completed in the year 2006 where 156 MPA concrete has been done. Why? Because, because you're able to make the columns very sleek. So you, you're able to eliminate these columns into smaller columns and eliminate the columns in between and make a large space. Carpet area improves, customer is happy, contractor is happy. Other, another example for uh, uh, the mixed design for a brilliant tower and you know, sorry. So you have the example here. Uh, this is done by TC Corporation, another project completed in 2006 where there's a lot of details about the project and what sort of mixed design was used C130 uh, sort of mixed design was used and this is these are details of it so if you talk about anything big and other things there's a lot of BSF mixtures being used so you're working with someone who's got an expertise into each of these areas into concrete whether it is concrete or waterproofing or flooring you are you have a you have a better sol we have a better solution in terms of uh, performance now today our topic is on uh, smart dynamic concrete now uh, the, many of you have heard like you know mr uh, promoter uh, yeah he was mentioning about what is this smartness is all about so the next uh, few minutes i'll tell you what this smartness is all about uh, Smart dynamic concrete is something which, which we call it sort of going to be the everyday concrete. You know, people will start using this as an everyday concrete rather than, you know, call it a very uh, you know, smart dynamic or a special concrete. So today, what are the market needs? How is the market going? How, how are things going here today? Everybody wants speed of construction. You know, construction speed needs to be increased. So the faster you are able to build, the better it is you know floor to floor speed people want to in, uh, increase use of variety of binders today if you see uh, people just don't want to use only uh, opc and uh, limestone uh, only cement and limestone but there's a possibility of people checking out using fly ash using slag using metacaulin micro silica there's number variety of binders is what we're talking about so people would like to use variety of binders today so with that how are we able to going to produce a durable concrete so that's that's the under question new technologies in form work so even the construction uh, things uh, are improving so in terms of form work gone are the days where you pour a concrete for one and a half or two meters but today we are looking at pouring a concrete of three meters or four meters in one go and you have form works coming up where you know, you're pour the entire wall in one go so that's the sort of construction which is happening the aluminium type form work is already available and people go pour the walls and slabs in one go so we using a brick masonry for the walls and other things is time consuming because of speed and availability of labor they are brought over to uh, new types of form work is in place today availability of skill labor getting a carpenter today to do the shuttering you know the uh, to do the shuttering is very difficult to do the binding to do the lot of other works is very difficult so availability of skill labor is under question today so if there is a, a uh, if there is a solution to avoid all this it's it's much welcome crusher does in uh, places like in, in india uh, about 80 to 90 percent of all the states have banned the use of reverse sand 
you are not allowed to dredge the sand anymore. So it's all crusher dust, only very few states and they will also go in for a ban very soon. So when materials like you know proper sand is not available, proper river sand according to the grading is not available, you have very fine sand or you have a crusher, du crusher dust or ro crushed rock fines have to be used, what are we going to do? Is, your con is my concrete going to be durable or am I going to get a good quality concrete and all these questions come up. Longer workability, a situation like this, this is a typical sort of Friday evening or a Monday morning in Mumbai. Okay, so <coughs> transporting concrete from one point to other becomes difficult. Many of you who deal with concrete know what it used to take to deliver a concrete two or three years before and what it takes now. Okay, every single day it becomes increasingly difficult to transport concrete and the timing is keeping on increasing. So in, in Mumbai, I remember maybe 10 years before, it was, you know, what they needed was two, one, one and a half hours of retention. Today is nothing less than three and a half hours of retention. Nothing less than three and a half hours. And after it reaches the site, you need another one hour to pour. So that's the sort of having all these, then you still need to achieve the strength develop strength. And of course, give you the durability. How are we going to manage this? So in terms of say, for a, take the example of uh, uh, the model of form work. So when you want to pour a concrete in one go from the top to the bottom, you find areas like this where there's a lot of repairs have to be done. There's a lot of uh, uh, facial work which is done, you know, because of the honeycombs and other things because the concrete what is poured is not proper. So many of you must have been feel, uh, getting this at the site where uh, having a honeycomb is not so, it is not that it is uh, new. It is common to have a honeycomb, but then it's only a facial thing what you do there. So how can we avoid getting this sort of uh, uh, this sort of uh, honeycombs and other defects in concrete? Imagine a site like this. I, I love this picture, and I, I I remember to put this slide in every presentation of mine. Can someone say what is unique in this picture? Not a single worker. Pardon? Not a single worker. Yes, not a single worker. But is the concreting going on? Yes. You can see the concrete is being pumped, but not even a single person at the side. Is it possible here? What about quality? Because this is raft foundation the most important part of a structure you're putting you're pouring a raft foundation and not even a single person at the site can we have this as a solution here so there is this what we are talking about is a no need for laborers at the site no need for vibrations vibrating equipments at site no delays continuous pouring timely completion of your project you, res uh, you get an excellent finish, durability and strength are ensured, which means can this be an everyday concrete. What about quality? We talked about quality. Quality is just checked at this point. You check quality at this point, okay, once the transit mixer comes in, the, the particular guy checks the, uh, for the slump flow or the spread, checks the spread, if it is all right, it goes on because all the quality is done prior to it and you just check there the V funnel and the slum flow things are all right and you just keep pumping the concrete that's what this can do so what is this all about here we are talking about a concrete called smart dynamic concrete or the everyday concrete so what is this all about it's a highly flowable concrete without the aid of vibration can be used in 20 to 40 MPA grade concretes Optimum cementitious content, overall savings in construction uh, construction in terms of time and money. So this is made possible with the help of special admixtures with a special polycarboxylic ether based admixture and a, a inbuilt viscosity modifying agent. Now uh, this makes the concrete more economical, ecological and ergonomical uh, what it does. So this is 
nothing but a self compacting concrete many of you could have heard about a self compacting concrete so now the question is how is this self compacting concrete different from how, how is this mass smart dynamic concrete different from this uh, self compacting concrete so uh, actually speaking smart dynamic concrete and uh, self compacting concrete are not different they both same uh, smart dynamic concrete is nothing but it is low fines self compacting concrete now years back when the actual concreting was being done when when we do smart dynamic concrete even for an m30 grade there were very high amount of cementitious content cementitious content to the extent of something like 5 above 500 500 600 or 700 cementitious sometimes even so when you have a very high cementitious content you are forced to you know you, you doing that but your strength what is achieved here is above m50 so it was way too expensive and way too qc sensitive for a smart dynamic concrete to be used for an m30 grade you always land up getting an m50 uh, mix now that we have worked on uh, bsf has worked on this and we uh, we have come out with a solution where it is now possible to produce and self compacting concrete even with low fines fines equivalent a little bit more than your regular traditional vibrated concrete or your regular concrete so that's what this smart dynamic concrete is all about we'll see little bit more so what is that we are talking about here is instead of checking the you uh, pouring a slump concrete we look at a concrete which is highly flowable you check for the spread and the v funnel values and then we uh, okay the the concrete so what are the salient features here how is it different from uh, the the uh, traditional vibrated concrete so here what we have is the strength is 20 to 40 mpa both are same slump loss is same 60 to 90 minutes cementitious content almost remain same not much change water content is same your traditional vibrated concrete needs to be vibrated but this is no vibration at all your traditional vibrated concrete doesn't flow it gives you a slump here it gives you 600 to 700 slump so it's all same but it's the admixers which do the magic it makes it highly flowable and makes it highly ergonomical and economical as well the economic part i'll ca I'll, i'll catch you i'll i'll let you know a little later now let's go and see in a video our self compacting concrete here what they are doing is they are actually repairing a sort of a dock or a strengthening a dock and trying to pour a self compacting concrete so here you can see that the concrete is being poured from one end and it is you know the formwork is put up here they'll keep pouring the concrete until there is a test bore here they'll keep pouring the concrete until the concrete just pops out or comes out from the test bore on this side there you have a test bore and that's 20 mm aggregates so not 10 mm you can see the aggregates on the top 20 mm and 10 mm on the top even though the concrete is highly fluid you know flows like water here but you still find aggregates or there is no segregation so in a in a so the the, the whole point here is compared to a high flow concrete versus a smart dynamic concrete or a self compacting concrete is this that the concrete is highly flowable but you still have the concrete homogeneous 
and and the aggregates being in the in the places now how does it how is it being done it is because you manage the viscosity in such a way so viscosity of the concrete so this is with the help of a viscosity modifying agent which is actually a part of this uh, uh, hyperplasticizer or a superplasticizer so special admixtures are used here to take care of that uh, this thing and that's how you get this sort of values now directly going into sort of what is if i am a project owner what do i get from you know i can bet on this this is a concrete which is far more durable and long lasting than your traditional vibrated concrete the reason in an m30 traditional vibrated concrete though i have a formwork but i have to depend i have to depend upon the laborer or the or the guy who is working on it and he is vibrating is putting the poke up at the very next day when he removes it you still have a doubt there's a lot of there could be a lot of honeycombs even though you have don't have honeycomb at the sides but maybe in the center inside we really don't know whether it is really vibrated properly or not but this is one concrete which pushes even the air outside so which means it is fully it 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 fills the form work fully compared to traditional vibrated concrete this concrete it on any day which be much more durable and long lasting than a traditional vibrated concrete more aesthetically pleasing in many places in uh, in europe what they do is they have concrete finish walls concrete finish columns they don't even paint it they leave the concrete as it is you get the finish of your form work you get actually sometimes you even get mirror finish with this type of concrete so that's that's what you can do but the last point of all is what is most interesting quicker return on investment this particular type of concrete increases the construction period to such an extent that it is possible to reduce the construction time by 20 to 30% which means if a project is being planned for 36 months you can bring it down to say 24 months or whatever even if a 6 months you are able to finish a project earlier as huge amount of money huge amount of money and even for a contractor it means the same for a contractor he places the concrete faster which means say i have planned a 200 300 cubic meters of pour in in a day and it takes me 12 hours and with this i'll be able to place the same thing in say 8 hours or 9 hours or 10 hours what i'm doing from 12 if i'm bringing down to 8 that extra 4 hours of uh, whatever uh, uh, extra money which i have to pay to the laborers or the overtime which i have to pay to the laborers i save huge savings in terms of time in terms of skill labors you don't need people there a typical site pouring site would have 20 30 people you bring it down directly to 10 or 5 your work is done lower pump pressures the pump pressure is much lower which means uh, we are, we are working on uh, we have been working with swing stator for uh, last 5 6 years and for specially on self compacting concrete and other things where we have uh, where there is a very clear under understanding or now we have a data what it says is that from compared to a traditional vibrated concrete which has got 100 to 120 mm i'm talking about pumpable concrete 100 to 120 mm slump versus an scc or an sdc the for every 20000 or 30000 cubic meters of concrete the pumping line needs to be changed because the aberration is much higher on the pumping line so for every 30000 cubic meters that's their call you know 30000 cubic meters the pumping lines have to be changed but for an scc and stc you can be well off with more than 50000 or 60000 cubic meters which means there's a lot of savings on your assets which you put in the place improved work safety elimination of noise in many place in mumbai and elsewhere even in europe and elsewhere this concrete is being used because you don't have to use vibrator there it's just the pump sound and the concreting goes on it's smooth no sound no noise so even in residential areas even densely populated residential areas even in the night time the concrete can be done smoothly without any issues less claims for defects in finished structure because you get a very good smooth finish in the concrete 
you don't have to do a lot of repairs and other things so the contractor is much better off having putting this concrete rather than your traditional library concrete so here it is not about the cubic meter cost of the concrete but it's the overall savings what the contractor gets in each of these points which it, which it scores and makes it much more attractive for a contractor for a designer and an architect ability to make more complex shapes and designs so today because this concrete can flow in a uh, in a, uh, in, a uh, in a given form work uh, if you travel to india next time if you're coming to bangalore you can see in bangalore airport you will find a sort of you know s shaped uh, roof and that s shaped roof has been done with self compacting concrete because the, they place the lower and the upper form of pour the concrete the, this uh, segments are something like uh, 24 meters long uh, why width is 150 to 200 meters uh, 200, 200 centimeters uh, uh, 20 20 meters wide 24 meters long 150 mm thick so huge weighing something like uh, one segment would weigh something like five six tons so this the whole of this concrete has been done with self compacting concrete the shapes so many of the aesthetically pleasing and complex shapes can be designed by architects fair faced concrete they would like to have fair faced an exposed surface this can be possible with this sort of concrete better consolidation and bond to the reinforcing steel uh, more durable structure coming to the important part of it how does the cost benefit against your regular concrete so cost benefit is like if you compare it with the traditional vibrated concrete smart dynamic concrete on any day is going to be costlier expensive by at least by 5 to 20 percent in this case it is about 20 percent is what is given here it is going to be expensive by 5 to 10 10 percent or 15 percent but when you look at the overall cost if when you look at the overall cost of the project it's going to be much more cheaper i'll just show you an example shortly so here is an example yes tvc is a traditional vibrated concrete sdc is a smart dynamic concrete which you are talking about so this is a typical example what we did in europe as well as there's plenty of examples in india as well uh, and uh, in singapore and in japan and many places in europe uh, this is an example typical example of how in a total of five, five floors a normal five floor building with walls and slabs put together in one go construction value was about 4.8 million euros this is a height length depth surface volume of concrete involved what we actually tried to do was stopwatch all activities you know stopwatch how much time does it take for each activity and how much time does it take what is the cost of each activity so this was our, our target so the five process steps where you put the outside formwork then put the reinforcement put the inside formwork concrete place place the concrete remove the formwork and go to the that, then go to the next level so how much time does it take so material cost impact including the equipment cost and other things labor cost and the process cost was what we measured what we found out was the formwork cost went down by about three percent reason for five floors whenever you go from one floor to the other there's a lot of scrapping and you know denting which happens because in a concrete which is in a traditional vibrated concrete you're pouring a concrete at a very low slump i mean in a low slump i mean 100 to 120 which is pumpable though the concrete is being poured and vibrated from the top there would be always guys at the bottom using a wooden mallet and banging for proper placement and because of banging on the formwork there's a lot of dents and other things which happens on the formwork and the next day when you remove it you'll have to make right the formwork before you put it into the next place so there's a cost involved in the formwork as well this is totally avoided with a smart dynamic concrete because the concrete fills in the place you don't have need to guys to go and bang there at the bottom formwork cost comes down reinforcement no change there's no change in reinforcement the concrete cost went up by 10% waste 
comes down by 50%. Okay, this is not so significant. But the in place, placing cost of concrete. So many of us do not always look at the cubic meter cost and we, we say, oh, this is expensive and this is not expensive. This admixture is expensive, this is not expensive. It is not the cubic meter cost, but you look at the in place cost of the admixture. How much does it take to produce this concrete, transport the concrete, place the concrete, finish the concrete, gain strength and go to the next level. That's the in-place concrete. In-place concrete strength comes down by 50%. And this is what turns the table. So from a traditional elevated concrete of 819 euros, it, uh, it comes down to minus uh, 6761, which is a saving of about 7% saving in the overall cost. The advantage, what you get in terms of productivity and other things, that's this, yes. cost of the material could increase by 15 percent. So because the traditional vibrated concrete you use a normal admixture, you know use a regular admixture, you know the lignosulfonate based admixture or something like that. But here you would be using a special admixture called a PC, that's where the cost increase comes from. But because you are using a special admixture which makes the concrete not only highly flowable, <laughs> flows like water. But what you're also making is you're using an admixture which makes it flowable as well as keep the aggregates and other things well in a homogeneous state throughout the body of the concrete. The viscosity of the concrete is also being maintained at the same time. And that is why the cost of the concrete goes by 20%. Yes. So what you're saying is you use the traditional vibrated concrete and if you add your admixture, you Transfer it to a smart uh, I, it, it's, it's not exactly the same mix design, little bit change in the mix design. Like say for example, in, a, in your mix design you would you know, say your, uh, your aggregate, uh, coarse aggregate versus fine aggregate ratio is something like say 60-40. With a self compacting mix it could be something like 55-45 or 50-50. A minor change in your mix design. But the overall cementitious content and others will remain same. But we use the aggregates that we are using. Same aggregates, nothing different. Same cement, maybe a little bit of cementitious content. It all depends upon the sand and other things. Little bit of change in the mix design. You get M30, highly flowable mix, and an excellent concrete. What is the relation? Same. No change. Same curing as what you do. No change there. Of course it has to be batching. We don't recommend it to be done in a site where there is no way batching to be done. Volumetric batching, forget it. It's, it has to be way batched. Proper batching plant, it has to be done. And, and I remember, remember the, the, the caution here is uh, all in a, in a batching plant, any, for any concrete, you need to be very careful on the moisture content in the sand the water absorption of your sand and aggregates all these things are there. that's the regular quality control and this for the same this also have to be maintained in the same way but the the caution is that if you if it is not done properly and remember this is a highly flowable concrete and the moisture content is not corrected properly you could get segregation okay but that quality control has to even for regular concrete you will anyway have problems the same holds good for this as well no effect because you're using the same same cementitious content. Yeah, so here the you're changing the voids, it become concrete becomes much more denser. So there is no uh, uh, increase in temperature or anything of that sort. I'll give you an example a little later. I'll, I'll show you an example where we poured even a mass concrete. Okay. And sort of a world record was also created for that. I'll just show you on the reference part. Pardon, sir, can you come? Can be a little bit louder?
Uh, so here we are talking about a concrete for the regular buildings and regular structures. When you are talking about dam concrete, if we do such similar concrete, we have a solution for even dam concrete as well, where we talk about M15, M20 grade concrete with just 250 or less than 250 kg of cementitious content. It will have 90 kg of cement and the rest would be fly ash. I mean with that sort of a concrete today, generally dam concrete is, is uh, carried through a conveyor and poured on a conveyor. But for today, we do have solutions where we can pump dam concrete with 150 mm size boulders is possible. With this with an extension of the same technology. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, excellent. So, okay, the regular admixture what we use today is lignosulfonate based admixture. Lignosulfonate based admixture as such has got a water reduction capability of only 5%. Am I not audible? I'm just recorded, okay. Because I wanted to thought of. Okay, uh, the, the regular admixture has got only 5% or maximum 10% water reduction capability and that's why for an M20 and M30 grade concrete with a very high amount of water content, it is okay, you know, you get the water reduction and things are possible. Now, you have naphthalene based admixtures. Naphthalene based admixtures can give a water reduction capability up to say 24% maximum. And that's why naphthalene based admixtures are being used for um, grade of concrete such as M40 and M45. Then comes PC based admixtures, polycarboxylic ether based admixtures where the concrete is being used for M45 and above, M50 and above. So where the water reduction capability can go up to 35%. So now what we are doing here is this concrete has got PC based admixture. It's a PC based admixture which is used even at an M30. So it has got a very high water reduction capability. To tell it in another way, it has got a very high dispersion. So the why it makes the concrete highly flowable is because it has a very high dispersion capability and it just makes the concrete flow like anything even at an equal dosage of what a lignosulfonate based admixture can do. Okay, so it makes the concrete highly flowable. Now, making the concrete highly flowable alone is not enough. So there could be a lot of segregation. You know, today we do make highly flowable concrete. You know, the, at the fifth minute when you check, you have a 200, 210 slump or collapsed concrete, what we call very highly flowable concrete. Collapsed concrete is already being produced, but over a period of time it falls. But this collapsed concrete or the highly uh, high flow high uh, flow concrete which is the initial is highly segregated you have a segregated mix initially but in a self compacting concrete or a smart dynamic concrete you cannot have any uh, segregation happening so that's where you need not only need a high flow but you need something which can also make it make the aggregates uh, in, in a homogen uh, float in the concrete or uh, put 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 this in a suspended mode you know aggregate has to be sub suspended in the body of the concrete and what makes it suspended is the viscosity modifying agent so the the solution what we have in the na name of master matrix master matrix is now a part of the pce and that is what makes the concrete highly flowable may, may helps the concrete compact of its own weight as well as take care of the, it also takes care of the suspension of the aggregates as well. So that's the background of the chemistry behind what this uh, admixture is all about. Yeah. Okay. Longer away 
compared to their family and we go the old generation. And the analogy I like to use is, you know, before we used to have black and white TV, then we went to plasma, then we went to LCD, now we have LEDs and same thing. The efficient technology has gone from black and white TV, which was the Linux, and the LED, which was the plasma, and now we do LEDs and LEDs, which is PCs and PCs. Oh, thank you. So basically, you have this uh, PC being used as a uh, as an uh, admixture here, and as he rightly said, there's a sort of a, a dispersing effect which is happening on the cement, and that makes the concrete disperse, but as well as gives you the uh, uh, puts the uh, aggregates in suspension, which makes the di whole difference. Uh, just to give you a few uh, videos. So even if it's a normal slab which we are casting, had got, has got significant increase in productivity, increase in speed of construction, product therefore productivity increases. You no need uh, more skill labor, reduce need for skill labor and labor involved. Some examples here: the typical 400 kg of uh, 400 kg mix. You get about. 42 MPA with 0.8 percent dosage, deshuttering at a much earlier time. Sorry, this is greater than 50 percent strength in three days, which helps you to go because when you your the regular lignosulfonate based admixture what we use today uh, uses a method of a means by which you know uh, it actually retards the concrete to give you retention. You know today the workability retention is managed by retarding the concrete you know uh, the, the regular lignosulfate sulfate based what we use today that does that but with PCEs you don't have to retard the concrete it just retains the slump or retains the workability so then the advantage here is because it doesn't retard the concrete you get faster setting and because it sets faster the strength gain is faster so then you don't have to you, you get early dispersion is higher because of dispersion, what it means is now there is more water per grain of cement. You know, excellent dispersion, more water per grain of cement. So the hydration of cement is faster. The strength gain is faster. You are able to get something like say uh, your 80 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent strength in seven days, 50 percent strength in three days. You are just speeding up the whole process. So PCE based admixtures generally help you speed up the process, even in a regular. Uh, regular mix or regular concrete. Another example here. So when we talk about modular formwork or aluminium shuttering formwork, here you can uh, you know you sort of pour the concrete at one end, and you can see the, how the concrete feel flows through to to more than 100, 100, 10 meters, more than 10 meters in length. Here's an example how the concrete flows. So here you can see the concrete flowing all the way and it comes on this side, they are pouring the concrete there. This is 100 mm thick wall, the modular formwork, the walls are thick, uh, thin. You see the concrete flowing this side, flowing again onto the other side as well. All around, yes. And you can see the concrete from there, it is coming from here as well. As in slope, you no slope, it just pour the concrete from one end, it, it flows wherever it finds place, it keeps flowing. And good quality concrete, you know, homogeneous concrete, just not a segregated concrete. So, 20 mm. Full, full compaction is ensured, even at the height. This is being, this is a modular formwork. Which means the whole wall, you know, you're pouring the <coughs> sorry, pouring the concrete from the top 
it comes up to the bottom fills and then moves around in the entire space so you full compaction is ensured no vibration done effect on formwork is minimal waste stages are reduced speed of pour impro improves which means even if it's a uh, concrete producing company if it's an rmc you send the truck transit mixer your transit mixer sometimes you know if the concrete is being poured onto a, a hopper it might take say 35 minutes to 45 minutes but with this concrete it halves the time you know, within 15 to 20 minutes you're out the site so that's because the concrete is being pumped faster on the top you don't need people that it just flows around so you finish the so productivity increases for the contractor as well as for a uh, for an rmc the truck is back faster at the site Pardon? Yeah, in most of the time people, you know, if you have a, sometimes if you don't have a flexible, you know, boom pump, people do use it, you know, for this type of concrete, you place it at one area, it flows all the, this thing. And then maybe uh, after three, four hours, you just move it to a different place and then keep pouring. So you have pour it on two different points and you still get the same uh, productivity. Finish is much better you get the finish of your formwork so it's a very good finish is what you get smooth finish is ensured what it means is eliminate the patchwork and repairs the next day so here in this case because there's no change in uh, 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 water content the water content remains the same uh, because the ag aggregate cement ratio remains the same we're not going to you know, drastically increase aggregate cement ratio and the this uh, the whole thing is going to be in an enclosed stage so if it's a, if it's a regular concrete it does it is going to be uh, in a enclosed area if it is a sort of a flat surface where you're pouring you have to take it uh, you have to take care of plastic shrinkage correct? where there what you need to do is you sort of you know spray an evaporation reducer or something like that to take care of the concrete but the plastic shrinkage crack we have checked it is not as different as your regular concrete it is almost same only thing you need to protect the concrete from heat wind and relative humidity has to be there and your concrete is taken care less grinding so sometimes you know when you want to paint the concrete you grind the concrete actually so here because you get a very smooth finish grinding reduces the effect of grinding also reduces reusability of formwork is increased you know uh, today if you buy modular formworks now it is very expensive formworks are today are very expensive but the reusability is much better with this type of concrete so why what is SDC in a, on a summary is a low fine self compacting concrete for grades M20 to M40 can be used in space between uh, greater than 100 mm okay uh, reinforcement space more than 100 mm if you have con if you have congested reinforcements if you have con congested reinforcement you use a classical SCC which means high amount of fines less uh, instead of 20 mm go for a 10 mm those sort of changes needs to be done but for spaces greater than 100 mm you can fully use it especially like mass pores and you know your modular formwork and other things stc can do the job much better testing criteria what we uh, uh, do is you know test for filling ability viscosity segregation resistance and passing ability this is as per the fnr guidelines so uh, as of one value vf2 and v funnel value at five minutes and passing ability is not required to be tested if the space between reinforcement is greater than 100. If it is less than 100, then you test it for the L box, the J ring, and other test as well. So, no vibration is allowed. So, you should not tolerate any vibration because if you vibrate this concrete, you will have segregation. So, you do not allow vibration on this particular concrete at all. So, just to give you uh, the, the site at the time of pour when i say at the time of pour after two hours or two and a half hours when you're just about to pour if you have a site if you have a lab at the site what test you need to do at the lab is this check for the filling ability you should have something between 550 to 650 it is okay 
you have to check for all these three all one two three are important viscosity v of 2 value within 5 to 25 seconds uh, so uh, i hope uh, you know about v funnel test v funnel test is something like you have a v funnel uh, there's a trap door at the bottom you keep the trap door at the bottom closed you pour this flowable concrete into it and then at, uh, you open the uh, gate, gate at the bottom and collect the concrete you check for the time for the concrete to empty this vf okay that time in second should be between 5 to 25 seconds then there is a segregation resistance there are various ways of doing segregation resistance but this is one test which we recommend say in a site if you don't have too many uh, testing instruments this is the basic instrument which you can have we funnel test at 5 minutes what we do here is the same we funnel but after pouring it in keep the setup aside for 5 minutes don't touch it for next 5 minutes after 5 minutes you open the trap door and now check how much time it takes if the initial say it is about 20 seconds if the initial uh, v funnel at 0 0 minute is 20 seconds v funnel at 5 minutes should be plus or minus 3 it can either go up to 23 between 17 to 23 the reason is the reason is if the concrete is segregated if the concrete is segregating it will settle to the bottom and then it will actually choke the concrete at the void where it is just coming out so you will very clearly know if the second is going more than three seconds then you know the concrete is segregating and this concrete has to be discarded it's not allowed so that's the say, typical segregation test which we can do and try to find out how uh, whether the concrete is good or not if if you want to test the concrete at the time of pour, you know, like you know, on the on the 14th floor or at the at the hopper side, you know, just next to the hopper, if you want to check, you can just do this to check. Just check for the because you've already done this at the lab and you're pretty sure that you are getting these values. And at the pouring point, you know, at the hopper end, you do just this one. You check for the filling ability. If it is 550 to 650, same as what here after this is after two hours this is also after two hours okay if the same value then it is okay visual stability index between zero or one so what is visual, visual stability index it is this so you check for the spread of the concrete you do the flow table and you check the fresh spread this is as per ASTM C uh, 1611 so what you do here is if the concrete is segregating you will find there is a small heap of aggregates in the center and there's a lot of bleeding on the sides this concrete not allowed reject the other type is a concrete which could be soupy highly soupy concrete you have a slurry you know, the aggregates is uniformly spread is quite okay but if you have you can see slurry leaking out to more than 10 mm beyond the periphery of the concrete so then this is also not acceptable reject what is acceptable is these two here you have a perfectly well spread concrete you can see the big size aggregates 20 mm and 10 mm even at the you should be able to see 20 mm and 10 mm at the periphery and a slurry not more than 10 mm not less than 10 mm you know there is some sort of slurry but less than 10 mm this is okay and here you have perfect round uh, finish at the uh, at the ends so this is visual stability index zero these two are the ones which we accept these are rejected this is at the set level if you are able to do this and manage and you have a very good quality concrete to be poured yes <coughs> especially for self compare i'll quickly take you into some of the sdc reference projects foundation work for shanghai tower in china yes Not the same. Yeah, that's it. You pour the concrete, you know, for a regular concrete, you in a cube, you pour it three times, do the tampings here. Here you don't uh, do the tamping. In this, you will not have to do the tamping. You just put the concrete on the top, it will fill. Maybe a little bit tamping on the sides and then keep the concrete. Next day you test for one day, three days, seven, twenty days. It's same. There's no difference. Foundation work for Shanghai Tower, this was 
a huge uh, uh, concrete which was done let me show you a uh, this is it's almost uh, near to completion is almost completed i think this is 632 meters high this is the second tallest uh, building in the world with 632 meters This is sort of world record created for the largest pour of mass concrete pour, 61,000 cubic meters of concrete poured in a single go in less than 60 hours. 61,000 cubic meters in less than 60 hours. Yeah, in some places, you know, even though you tell them so much that it's a flowable concrete, people still don't listen to it. They go and put that uh, this thing there. So this work started somewhere in uh, Friday afternoon, or maybe say 11, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Completed on mon by Monday afternoon, before Monday afternoon. So they had a very tight construction schedule. Mass concrete application requires low cement content to control heat. Application of manufactured sand. The achievements were 61,000 cubic meters of slab and raft foundation completed in less than 60 hours. 20 to 30 percent savings in time just on a raft concrete pour. 50 percent manufactured sand was used. Concrete temperature was maintained at less than 23 degrees. Triple blend, no use of OPC, fly ash and slag was used. The logistics, 450 truck mixers, 18 pumps and concrete delivered from 8 concrete batching plants. Was the logistics used to create this world record. You say the concrete is less than 12 in the division? No, at the time of pour. No, it's at the 23 degrees at the time of pour. Yeah, it will increase. What do you, why it is 23 degrees at the time of pour is, uh, in a mass concrete it is well known that the core temperature to the side should not be more than 20 degrees. Yeah, so you use uh, chilled water, you use ice flakes, you do all these things to bring it down to this temperature. Ambient temperature is 38 degrees in Shanghai. But same as here, nothing different, 38 degrees. What was the, what was the ratio of OPC I think it is 30-30-30, uh, 33-33, almost 150 cement, 150 fly ash, something like that. 150 cement, 150 fly ash, and 150 slag. Massive foundation here, uh, just done in Shanghai. Some pictures here. And... Uh, Six and a half meters tall raft, thick raft. Huh? The raft top of the raft is this. Pardon? So these are these are the side uh, walls protecting the uh, this, uh, the soil from not collapsing. So it just. Yeah, yeah, this is the periphery of this thing. So raft, this is the top of the raft. No, no, uh, I don't say that the temperature of the concrete is reduced by use of the product. Huh? Temperature reducing temperature of the concrete is by mixed design. 
So you need to use the right supplementary cementing materials. You need to use ice flakes. You need to take up those measures. You know, uh, those measures have to be taken. Sometimes people do even use retarders to slow down the hydration process. They don't mind the concrete, uh, the, the, the lengthening the the setting of concrete so that the heat development doesn't peak. Okay, so there is various other means of. I'm just only talking about the placing of concrete here. I'm just showing you the concrete was placed in a record time. Okay to achieve and imagine that that's a such a crucial project right it's 632 meters tall in the next high rise uh, part i'll show you something on shanghai tower as well so 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 for a, even for a crucial project you know for the foundation you can use this type of concrete because of the speed in construction what you need and you can gain that speed in construction you don't have to put it into blocks you remember generally what is the idea is you know you put one block then the next block another block here 60000 cubic meters in one go that's what you can do. Six and a half meters thick. So, smart dynamic concrete is not just a concrete only for the premium projects. Here's an example for low income house housing ha, housing project, where you know the concrete has to be the cheapest. Okay, contractors do use it because there's a lot of other savings in terms of time in terms of repair cost which we just saw earlier repair cost all these extra costs put together uh, will cost you much more so what it does is in the first place if you're able to put in a good concrete then you don't have to worry about the other extra repairs and timing and other things is totally avoided huge numerous examples uh, with uh, this thing slum clearance board project rehabilitation projects also the actual um, what do you call uh, the the concrete was not specified with SDC or smart dynamic. It's a regular concrete. What was specified M20 and M25 grades, but later on they used this purely because of the cost advantage, not the cost advantage per cubic meter, but the total overall cost advantage was what they went in for. A typical mixed design and M20 in Bangalore. Binder content 360 kg, so you can produce a self compacting concrete with 360 kg cement. That's this innovation is all about. Provided your sand con sand is good, everything is good, you can even do this with 360. 0.8% uh, dosage, and remember this 360 is 50% has got 50% slag in it, it's a Portland slag cement. 0.4%, pardon, sir. Sky six one double yeah. We are added about 0.8 percent dosage of 0.8 percent of 360. And for an M20, even because because I, I told you earlier, P, when you use PCE, you get high early strengths, even for a regular grade. So for an M20, you land up getting strength as high as 35 mp. So there's still scope of cutting down the cement content. But as per uh, uh, as per the coral provisions in, in India, you cannot go less than 360 cementitious for M20. So we have the customer, the client said, leave it at 360. So we were able to do it to 360. Yes, so this project is. 100% manufactured sand in Mumbai, in Bangalore, in Chennai, in all these places. It's 100%. No river sand is not available. We use 100% manufactured sand. So it's possible. But what happens here is we have to be very, very. This is not possible if you have a good, if you don't have a good graded sand and there is no uh, big variations in con uh, in the sand. If you have big variations, then you will have to increase the cementitious color, that is for sure. For example, I will tell you here we are able to do with 360 to 400 because sand gradation is good, variations are lower. In Mumbai, typically, because the sand is so poor, in Mumbai, I am not able to do it less than 520. I need minimum 525 cementitious content. Why? Not because of the flowability and other things, because I have to pass that V funnel test. 
that V funnel test is the crucial. So for SDC, smart dynamic concrete means that V funnel at fifth minute, which I told you, the segregation resistant is important. These two are important. If you, if anybody talks, comes in, I also have a self compacting concrete. Ask him to prove V funnel test at five minutes, and then that's self compacting. Okay. So here is where that difference is where you are able to show with the lowest cementitious content possible passes the V funnel at 5 minutes and all those other values. Let's, let's go a little faster. Record after record, this is another record with 2.4 kilometer long pumping. 2.4 kilometer long. This is for a Chuzachan hydropower project. Pumping height, you know, the Burj Khalifa, we did the pump height up to six, more than 600 meters. Okay. But here, uh, pumping vertically up is a little bit easier. Pumping vertically down is difficult because you have air pockets, you know, you get air gets sucked in and you get uh, concrete choked. And if you, if it gets choked on this line, the concrete in the line itself is 16 to 20 cubic meters. Then I have to go remove the whole thing and do it. But we have done this particular project. And after this, we did a project called Morak Sagar. And very recently, we have done with uh, India as one of the known uh, uh, construction company or uh, contractor called Hindustan Construction Company, where we have done 2.7 kilometers long pumping. 2.7 is a record now. So sort of there, we are even trying to get it into a Guinness record for such long pumping as with this particular concrete. What is the diameter of the pipe? The the same size, same, no change in pipe. So it's like I think you use 120. Yeah, 125 mm pump, same thing. Uh, another, uh, this thing, 18 meters concrete being poured from an 18 meters tall structure. This is uh, concrete for the raker column in a natural draft cooling tower. You know, on, on top of this, you have this ring beam, and then you have the natural draft cooling tower. So, this slanting column is 18 meters high and the entire formwork was put in one go concrete poured from the top okay no segregation nothing you got beautiful finish uh, the, the part this is maybe one one and a half meters thick column so that's that's the concrete for you so this is for natural draft cooling tower for thermal power project near Nellore in South India which we have done so many such projects uh, we have done one in for uh, in the north in one of the nuclear power project we have done 10 meters fall perfectly good concrete so self compacting concrete is the concrete of the future earlier there was a hesitant for people to use because uh, because of the the the, the, the exp it was very expensive quality control and all those issues were there but with smart dynamic concrete all these things have been addressed and it is now more affordable and you can actually make it an everyday concrete what is the, what is the maximum they've done up to 10 meters sir 10 meters. yeah and this is a uh, yeah port from the top and this is 18 meters you know slide it from the in a, in, a, in a slanting column what happens here is if you have a slanting column you always have honeycombs on one side you know after you remove the former what happens you vibrate the concrete the as as escapes to the top and when the next day when you remove the concrete you find a lot of honeycombs and other things on the top because there's a lot of uh, in a slanting surface any slanting surface for that matter and that is where you need to use an SEC the SEC or a smart enemy concrete will push the air out and it flows like water actually so then it will push the air out and you get a perfect finish in this concrete so that that was about uh, smart enemy concrete I'll not, it's already past our time, so I'll quickly run through the high rise uh, solution. About, I'll just only take uh, talk about two projects and then we finish it. Uh, there's a lot of projects being done. Burj Khalifa is now the tallest uh, structure. Shanghai Tower, which I told you, was 632 meters, so right from the foundation to the entire height uh, was being done. So, some of the pictures of the Shanghai Tower project where the concrete was being vertically pumped to 632 meters. Sort of in terms of concrete pumping record, this will be the highest, 632 meters. Some more pictures. 
this is how it looked like when it is finished it's almost near to its completion uh, the Shanghai Tower Burj Khalifa sort of I'll just try to give the case study and then finish it off project developers is known design Skidmore and Owings uh, these are all a known, known thing so the piling, uh, there are over 200 piles, 1.5 diameter driven to a depth of 50 meters, 650 piles again driven to a depth of 36 meters. The raft concrete, again 3.5 to 4 meters thick raft was done with self-compacting concrete. So whenever, when you look at uh, huge pore and uh, massive pore like this, and you want to doubly ensure that the concrete has to be uh, sort of you know uh, resist you know the, there will be a lot of water pressure so then when you go down and, uh, in deep basements and other things you have a lot of water pressure acting you have chances of water to leak and all these things the best con the, uh, the concrete to bet on is this concrete because no matter whatever regular concrete you pour 150 mm or 160 mm slum and still vibrate you can still we really don't know whether there is a sort of a honeycombs in the center or at the sides but this is one concrete you can be doubly sure that there is no honeycomb in the concrete. So that's why this is being used. Typical mi mixed design for this is C60. SCC for raft is C60, which means 60 MPA cylinder strength. Cement, 252 fly ash, silica fume, free water. Here we used uh, viscosity modifying agent separately. That was a mixed design. What they did was three pores. Here, here they split into blocks. Three pores of 2,300 cubic meters and one pore of 5,600 cubic meters in one go. SEC being done in the raft foundation. Three point, here it is 3.7 meters depth. That's the thickness of the raft. So this is how it looks like when it is finished superstructure what they wanted is three hours of slab retention which means you pump from the bottom it reaches the top at 600 meters after three hours so that's the sort of this thing would want pumpable to a height of more than 600 meters initial they were thinking about 450 but later on it went up to 600 meters 10 newtons per millimeter square at 12 hours very high so here when this is a strength requirement to go up you cannot use a lot of retarder to give you that retention. You can use a retarder, but you know you cannot do that. 80 newtons at 28 days, temperature ranging from 10 to 50 degrees. So you need the product to work or the admixture to work, be compatible, give you the sort of retention, workability retention and other things. When the temperature is down at 20 degrees, as well as in this simmering hot when it is 50 degrees as well. Day night temperature is sometimes becomes as high as 20 degrees. Very difficult to manage at difference between day and night on a single day of 20 degrees. Consistent performance year round. What are the anticipated problems for this particular segregation? Slum flow specification, temperature control, quality control, pumping, blockages, placing techniques, curing, all these were concerns. So here actually we went in for a sort of a toolbox. So what it means it is no more that a single product system or a single product is being used. All these uh, uh, projects will have sort of a toolbox system where we use a number of PC polymers. So you bring number of polymers, tailor make it at the site and then do this. So toolbox approach was done something like this. You have various raw materials and finally you get something what you can eat. So the toolbox is like you can have a PC which can give you water demand, something which can control strength, something which can do viscosity control, slump retention, all this mixed and matched as per what it is required in the site and then you deliver the final product. So some lab and field testing, a lot of rheology test was done. So if you want to pump the concrete up to 600 meters high, there's a lot of rheology test needs to be done in terms of what is the shear stress, what is the plastic viscosity, and all these tests are being done. And then we finalized on the, on the product. So this is what uh, the rheometer typically looks like. 
fly, tried with various uh, supplementary cementing materials whether to go with a fly ash mix or a slag mix and all these things were tried finally we actually went in with the fly ash mix actually simulation tests were also done because you need to pump it to such height simulation test with five mixes each pressure and coefficient of was done so you pump the concrete through so every, every bend is considered you know it gives you certain height you know there's a so the height so they had about one two three bends on that side and two bends on this side which is equivalent to something like 600 meters uh, pumping to 600 meters tall so then we did this simulation and found out how the concrete works like what is the pump pressure all these things were done mixes were used for uh, m80 c80 with 20 mm aggregates c80 with 14 mm aggregates and c60 with 14 mm aggregates so this is the mix here 380 60 and 44 free water admixture in 384 96 48 and 3.75 and these were the mixed design which was used for this particular structure. Strength received, strength achieved. 12 MPA was what was required at 12 hours. We had 15, 14, and 12. 24 hours, 3 days, 7 days, 28 days, 108 for an M80 grade concrete. So you will end up in getting very high strength as well. This was strength which was being achieved on M80, C80 with 108 and 105. Tested at 12 hours. Crushing, eh? Yeah. So, what they did was C80 20 up to level 26, C80 14 up to level 126, and C60 14 to the final height. So, that, that was how they planned and did that. Uh, pumps, different types of pumps were being used, uh, special pumps were brought in. Uh, starting distance for a vertical pumping so a lot of tests done age 10 hours 15 hours 20 hours and 24 hours strength before pumping and strength after pumping so you expect the air to be squeezed out in the mix after pumping so you definitely get a higher strength after pumping as well so that was how the whole thing uh, went on because you, you, you need the right amount of, you, 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 you cannot afford to have a higher friction and other things in this mix. So mix has to be pumpable to such a height with the very less friction. So that's where the rheology test and other things were done and the pumping. Cylinder, cylinder. Strength, compressive strength on cylinders. So batches, every batch was tested and uh, done. Superstructure can some of the mixes. A world record of 601 meters uh, pumped. So this is a photograph of world record holders. This is how it looked like under construction. And now after completion, this is how Butch Khalifa looks. There are many projects uh, which are there, uh, which is now being uh, built. Uh, the admixture system, a lot of products being used like, you know, Concrete repairs, grouting, performance flooring, surface imprint sealants, waterproofing, all this was used. This was the first SEC in raft in, in UAE. World record was done. So even uh, the Freedom Tower, this is the structure which has now come up at the ground zero. After the World Trade Center was reduced, now they have built the Freedom Tower is again uh, done with uh, this. What here, what they have done is for the temperature control, they used RFID tags, you know, the temperature tags. They, you actually place in the mass concrete at different places, you pay, place the tags, and through GPS, you get, uh, you know, what is the continuously you track on what is the temperature gain or temperature increase in the structure. So that system was uh, used. So uh, form work in place, put the reinforcement, attach one or more temperature tags like this. So a temperature tag looks something like that. Fill the form work with concrete and then you have real time monitoring of temperature. So it's like you can access it directly from one point to the other what sort of strength values you are getting. The next is the project is already started. We are talking about more than 1000 meters taller than Burj Khalifa. The Kingdom Tower in Jeddah is already started. 
and uh, base of earth mixtures are being used in that particular as well and we in Mumbai also are using uh, our, uh, our, uh, there's a project called World One going on a base of earth mixer is being used for M95 grade concrete for central concrete to be pumped up to a height of 432 meters so now they have already crossed about 300 350 meters that's going to be the tallest residential tower in India or in Asia Pacific so with that we come to the end of today's discussion if there are any questions I will be free I will be glad to answer Request uh, KX triple nine zero wanted to move a little bit because it blocks another car. KX nine 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 zero. Would you please just uh, a little more that? Thank you. Of course, supplementary cementing materials can be used. Uh, 
whether it's for strength or for uh, uh, temperature control concrete. Yes, sir. As an example, how many are you to say But you need to be concerned about thermal cracks only in areas where the, the, it's a mass in a mass form. Let's say that your column is more than one meter thick or uh, one meter thick column, then you need to be really concerned about the thermal crack. But if it is a standard one. So what people are today doing is uh, especially in you know places like Colombo, this like Tokyo, in Mumbai, in Valencia, in Delhi and other places, the land area is very very expensive. The land is very expensive. So, any small, one square feet area is also cost a lot of money. So, what we do is like when you when you're building a, a structure with number of columns there, you will they would actually now they try to have a sneaker column. So, if you're going to growing taller vertical up, going to 20 meters, 30 meters, 30 floors, 50 floors, 60 floors, 100 floors, then you cannot afford to have massive columns. You know, columns of size more than one meter by 0.8 and all that. So that's it eats away lots of lot of your carpet area. So there what the people are using is going for a high grade concrete. So M80 and M100 grade concrete are being designed. So when you do that, so you one is you all automatically reduce your size of your concrete. Okay, so that you know you don't get into the heat. But supplementary synthetic material should anyway be used. You cannot, you know, sort of you know cannot uh, say that you can uh, use only cement. You know, you know, anyway have to uh, substitute supplementation to bring down the heat. Yes. Have you used this uh, concrete uh, video for a hundred for a hundred like piling? Yes, this, 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 is, this is one of the areas where piling also can be used because it can just push. You can change your water, 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 no, so here uh, there will be a washout, okay? There will be definitely some washout. But this washout, because the concrete is much more cement, it has got something what is called as a viscosity modifying agent inside. It holds the concrete together. So then what happens is compared to your regular concrete, regular piling mix, which is not just 180 mm stuff, versus this, this is much more resistant to washout property compared to regular concrete. This can actually give you a better strength than your regular concrete which is being used for piling. So one of the best uses for this is for piling as well, which can push the water and vent it out and have a very good compaction. Yes. So just one one question. Uh, yes. Maybe I missed the point. What is the main difference between SDC and SCC? I think that it's uh, no fines. It's a SDC is branded. BSF grant for SCC for the lower grades M22 and M5. Where you are able to do it with low fines, not unlike the fines which otherwise being used with 500, 600, etc. SCC is normal concrete. Pardon? SCC is normal concrete. SCC can be now used for regular normal concrete as well. That's, that's the whole idea. So here it can be now used as an everyday concrete because earlier it was not possible because we use a BMA separately. It's not a part of the so you use VMA separately, and then you also have to use a very high CDP system to really give you the suspension of things. Now, this previous talk much about viscosity of the Nowadays, we are talking about viscosity. Yeah. So, we see that the viscosity of the I think the experience in Sri Lanka is that uh, the country is growing rapidly. Construction techniques are implemented in a very positive way, and people are being educated in a very good way. It's very uh, refreshing to see. Okay. You know, your presentation is good as knowledge comes about and it teaches people that we are moving in the direction that we need to move in. But I think the challenges are there in Sri Lanka. And as we shall supply ourselves, we know what is happening in the market. Right? We know that this type of concrete, and I always tell people, you know, ambitious can make good concrete better, but cannot make a bad concrete good. 
This is a very important statement because people expect admissions to be very concrete good. So this kind of application techniques is, is, is very useful. In Sri Lanka, and I'm able to do it, I concur with everything you said. The only thing is that we must go back now and say, how can we improve our concrete standards to make this type of concrete on a daily basis? Because if we're not getting consistent cement, we're not getting consistent aggregates, we're not getting consistent admissions, right? we're not going to be able to come to the standards. So that important important right. Quality is a very important aspect. The body care is, we as professionals, when we talk, we do not talk about bad concrete, right? Do anybody think about producing bad concrete? No. But sometimes it so happens in the site, due to situations, that bad concrete is produced. Okay. Even though bad concrete, even though you produce a good concrete, just because the guy at the site has not placed the concrete properly, but not done his work properly, it becomes a bad concrete in the you know, honeycomb samples. This is sort of a solution where you can avoid such situations where the mistake is done by a labor who is working on this. So you are trying to minimize the reliance on the human factor in this supplement. So what you said is absolutely right. Admissions make good concrete better. So this is something for the betterment of things. <coughs> There are a lot of concrete on the floor, so before hardening the co concrete, we have some two events. So, on behalf of Civil Engineering Sectional Committee of IESL, I am inviting Chairman of the Civil Engineering Sectional Committee to present the token of appreciation to our lecturer. Thank you.